All right, so now I'm just going to hit calculate. And when I do that, you can see that uh, my scaled residuals are there and my monitor point velocity is also appearing. So you can see that the velocity is fairly flat. We are about 200, 225, 250 iterations, 350 iterations and nothing is happening, right? And our velocity, and let's take a look at the velocity plot. So we are just going to click on display and we are just going to display pressure as well. You know, you really can't say anything. Uh, one thing that I can say for sure is that uh, there is no vortex shedding because my velocity line velocity at the monitor point location was not at all fluctuating. So that's bad. Uh, one thing that I want to make sure is since uh, the solution is going to change as a function of iteration, it might be a good idea to add some animations. So I'm going to go to activities. I'm going to click on create and I'm going to click on solution animations and we are going to be looking only at the velocity animation. Uh, let us say that we store uh, the values after every 10 iteration or, you know, if you're doing a transient simulation, then you might see time step there, right? So let's type in a value of 10, make sure that you select velocity and then click on OK. OK, so that since we have already named a contour plot with velocity, I don't think it's allowing me to add a, a velocity object. So let me try that again. Go to solution commands and I'm going to call this velocity animation and type in 10 here. Click on velocity again and click OK. All right. Looks like that worked. So if I click on edit, you can see that velocity animation is there, but there's no data, right? That's because we ran the simulation first and then we tried to set up the animation, right? So it doesn't work that way. So unfortunately, what you have to do is you have to initialize your solution again, which I like to do and then rerun the calculation from the start. So now if we go to graphics, you can see that this window is actually updating, right? So that means after each 10 iterations, we are actually looking at the velocity, but the flow has actually reached a steady state and that's why you don't see any variation. Okay, so looks like the solution is complete. Um, and if you look at our residuals, it's kind of behaving funny. It has dropped below 1e minus 3, so you can call it converged, but it's not continuously dropping. And if you look at the monitor point velocity, this is what I said. It comes down straight and doesn't change at all. So let's click on solution animation playback and we're just going to play it. You can see that the solution becomes steady quite easily, right? So there you go. So the solution no longer changes. Now this is kind of bad. Why? We did update a solution, but it did not simulate the physics that we were looking for. Now we know for sure that when your Reynolds number is close to 40, you're supposed to see one Corman vortices. So I'm just going to go to setting up physics, uh, make sure that my viscosity is correct. And it is. So it looks like I've set up everything correctly. So the one parameter that I can try changing is my computation image. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close this guy, click OK. And then I'm going to click on computational mesh. So now what I'm going to do is under the mesh parameter from two meters, I'm just going to modify this to one meter, right? We'll see if that actually helps out. If it doesn't, we have to come back and refine it further. So now we have a one meter base mesh. We still have our uh, inflation layers and all that stuff. So this is good. So let's close this guy and make sure that you right click and update your mesh block and then we are going to right click our setup and update that as well all right so looks like the update is complete so let me click on um, ansys fluent and uh, make sure that double precision and uh, parallel option have been selected. Click on OK. All right, so I'm going to directly go to solve right now and I'm just going to click on uh, T equal to zero and I'm going to delete my previous solution because I don't want it. And then let's try running the case again, right? So the only thing that we have done is we have modified our uh, mesh and we're going to be looking at the computational mesh right now. So you can see that 
the behavior still seems to be the same there is really no difference okay and just for completeness I'm just going to be looking at uh, the animation as well to see if I can see some kind of minimal vortex uh, shedding right and there's nothing here that's bad so let's go back uh, close this and refine our computational mesh one more time 